Good evening. I'm Stacey Amos for News Channel 8, and these are the top stories we have for you tonight. Two teens are gunned down in St. Thomas. An exclusive interview with the family of one suspect charged in the murder of Corporal Wendell Williams, otherwise known as Lozzie. And some last-minute Valentine's Day gifts for you. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. <laughs> Our top story tonight, two teens were found shot to death on St. Thomas over the weekend. VIPD spokesperson Melody Rames has the details. Criminal Investigation Bureau detectives, including intelligence unit agents and patrol officers on St. Thomas, responded to a call of shots fired at approximately 2.30 a.m. on Saturday, February 11th, in the area of 1st and 2nd Streets in Sugar Estate, where the bodies of two gunshot victims were lying motionless on the street. Emergency medical technicians on the scene could not detect any signs of life on the victims. They were later identified as Jadal Bastian and Glenn Blyden, both 19. Police said during the gunfire, a bystander was grazed by a bullet to his side. He was also 19. He was treated and released from the Roy Lester Schneider Regional Medical Center. The preliminary investigation revealed that both victims were shot multiple times. Police said both deceased victims were in possession of firearms. Police confiscated the two firearms from the victims. This case is being actively investigated and police are urging anyone who has any information regarding these murders to call detectives at 715-5545. 715-5522 or you can call Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-TIPS. And our condolences go out to both of those families. In other news, News Channel 8's Wes Small spoke exclusively to the family of Sheree McClercent, a suspect charged in the murder of Corporal Wendell Williams, otherwise known as Lazi. Thanks a lot, Stacy. We are here at Territorial Court. Again, it's the aftermath of uh, could be a, a very big trial in VI history. Let's take you back to Friday. Five people were taken into custody. One female, four males, all posted a $1.5 million bond, the torture and murder of Corporal Wendell Lazi Williams, who's been missing since 2001. I'm here now with family members, quite a few of them, um, by the way, for Miss Sharima Clersant. She's the only female of the group, 32 years old, from a state to Williams. And as I got to the court this morning, I found out that Ms. Clarsant had, a prob uh, had, I believe, gotten um, ill, and um, we're going to talk to Julie Detterville. She is the family spokesperson. I'll be relying on her throughout this hearing and trial. Right now, let me tell you that Thursday they're coming in to Ju Judge Brady for a 10 o'clock hearing, and all are detained, $1.5 million bail. And is this her coming out? We do know that the marshals... That was her. Okay. Boy, they really went fast. Miss Detterville, what can you say about um, your friend, uh, your church sister, your family member being held in custody? What would you like the public to know tonight, keeping in mind that these records are sealed? Well, so first of all, I want to say that our heart goes out to the people who have had loss over the years, but we don't want them to use this as a means of, of reciprocating hurt for hurt. We believe in Sherma's innocence. We know Sherma is innocent. And if you look, just look at her, look at her life, she has no criminal charges, no criminal history, like the rest of these guys that she were arrested with. And we believe in her innocence. And the way and the manner in which the police came into her home and broke down her door, her children are our children's friends. And they're here today to show support for their friend's mom. And her husband wants the public to know that his wife is innocent. His wife is innocent, and we're going to keep stating that from now until they release her, and we're going to be here supporting her. She is a mother of four young ones who miss their mom, who love their mom, who haven't seen their mom since this has happened. The husband want the public to know that at 4 a.m. in the morning when the police came down and handcuffed his wife in front of her children with guns present, they were fearful. The children were fearful. They had his wife in a trailer for hours, and he didn't get to see her. They didn't even get to question her until about 7 o'clock that morning. 
What are the charges? Where is the evidence? Where is anything to convict her? And we want the public to know, do not convict her before you hear, before you know what is going on. She is our church sister. She is our family member. And we're going to continue speaking of her innocence because we know that she is innocent, Wes. Well, I'm not going to lead. I'm not going to ask you any leading questions that could jeopardize. Uh, Her case. That's yes. right. Yes. Or the prosecution's case. Um, but I, what did, I heard she was ill this morning. I believe when they said that bail was denied, she, she just felt she fainted, as as any mother would, because she came with the anticipation to court this morning, with her innocence in mind that I'm going home to see my kids. So she fainted. Julie Detterville. She's getting applause from the side, but this is a very serious matter. Our condolences do go out to the Williams family. And um, uh, again, everyone is innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Hearing again is 10 a.m. February 16th. I will be looking for you, Julie, outside the courtroom once again. Help me through this trial. So there you have it, another News Channel 8 exclusive. I'm Wes Small at Territorial Court for News Channel 8. And we'd like to thank Miss Julie Detreville for helping us out with that story. And homeowners in Hannah's Rest have been dealing with damaged roads for some time now. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this report. Thank you very much, Stacy. We are in Hannah's Rest where we have an infrastructure problem. I'm here with community activist Lloyd Daly. We know him. Uh, long and well a businessman and to the right of him is Fred I believe he's retired we um, have um, a, a senior citizen who is literally trapped in her home I've been getting phone calls for months about that lady we're gonna go in there now uh, her neighbor is gonna tell tales of how she's had to sink into the dirt just to help this lady human services vans meals on wheels and so forth can't even navigate into her yard this is not the first story I've done with Hannah's rest infrastructure it'll be the second one with mr. Daly and you remember the other one where the man literally had to have hip fishing boots to get back in his home. I'm coming to the senior citizen right now. I don't want to keep her waiting. Lloyd Daly and Fred, what is going on? And as we look at my email pictures for today from neighbors putting in their the email pictures, what is going on with the infrastructure at Hannah's Rest since we last talked? It's just deplorable. It has gotten worse. We at Hannah's Rest, we are taxpayers. We are law-abiding citizens, some of us are, are retired, and all we are looking for is some attention. All we are looking for is so that government plays the role that it's supposed to play and do what they're supposed to do. As taxpayers, we think what's happening to us is an injustice, and we are hoping that with this broadcast, someone, we have called Public Works repeatedly. We have had people from Public Works visit here look at it and, and made promises and that's all we're hearing just promises and nothing is happening and we're just fed up whether we we should put our money in an escrow account and stop paying taxes or whether we should take some some sort of action we don't know what to do this is the first time in probably a year that there hasn't been water in that <clears throat> um the water has been flowing it gets worse when it rains but there's always seems to be water flowing i broke my arm i was in my yard using the weed whacker and i sank in the mud and you broke your arm? Yes, when I um, pulled up, my boot came off and I fell and broke it on the weed whacker. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that, Fred. Are you going to sue Public Works? That will take forever. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. How long ago did that happen? The, December 19th. This past week, a guy was coming up here. Uh -huh. When he looked at the amount of water that was over there, he decided, well, let me take a shot caught. So he went in the neighbor's property and, oh. he, and he got stuck. He got stuck. You can see the pipe. You can see the, the blocks. Look, what we're trying to do is the upper part of the road. We have been taking pieces of blocks, uh, whatever we can find to put in there so that we, we don't sink in, in, in these holes. And you can see all, all the way up. That's the way it is. And it's been this way for months. I mean, for th today is the best it's been. And, and unfortunately, we, we just don't know what to do. Look at this. This is what has to happen. And this is the most beautiful day in a long time. Keep backing up, cameraman. I got your back. I got your back. Keep coming back. Look at that. Look at that. There's so much water. When they come, they got to see where to go at and how to get out and everything like that. And it doesn't make no kind of sense that they're coming to help take care of me. They should come in good and go out good. How long has it been like this, Dorothy? Mm, over about two years or so. Since you can remember, about uh, two years. Yeah. I'd like it to be fixed because, you know, I come over to see Dorothy. 
I can't drive over because I have to go out that way and come down. I can, and to walk over, the sink. I come through this, and that's the reason for the boots. I came over to check on Dorothy this morning, and then I told her that I would come back. And in order to come over here, because I came over here one day and I sank up over my ankles in mud. What would happen if a life-threatening situation happened to Dorothy? That is what this reporter is concerned about, and it better not happen. So do something now. In Hannah's Rest, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. And if you're still searching for a Valentine's Day gift, we have some great options for you. We'll be right back. Well, Valentine's Day is tomorrow, and News Channel 8's Wes Small files this report. Well, thank you very much, Stacy. Stacy, she's right here. And it's talk we're talking about Valentine's Day. And, you know, a lot of guys just don't get it, do we? You know? Man, I miss love on the aisle. I need some kind of counseling. We just can't put our hand. What do women want? Is it the old flowers, teddy bear and candy? Or is it just coal hard cash? Or maybe uh, a ticket to the hard to get to musical color purple? I don't know. What does a woman want today? So we are here with Stacy, and we're starting off our Valentine's, you know, see what people want, see what the ladies want, and the guys too. And Stacy's going to dissect it for me. Stacy, what do women want? Well, some earrings would be really nice, Wes. I remember the earrings. But we'll talk about those later. For earrings. Mm -hmm. All right, now you're going to interview Maria. Let's go get it all in. We are right across from Central High School with Maria. She's here with some wonderful little gifts. And as Wes mentioned, what do women want? Well, a variety of things. You can't just pin it on one thing. So, Maria, tell us the kind of items you have for guys who are trying to think what's the best gift for Valentine's Day. I have the basket for um, the champagne, the small champagne and the, um, the um, rolls by and chocolate. Flowers, chocolate. Yes, and uh, it's not too much. It's um, 15 and $20. Only 15 and $20. So, we, you know, cost is about the thought of the gift. Two would be nice. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but what else is inside? Some, oh, you have glasses too? Champagne no, glasses? that's a, that's a, yes, yeah, well, not glasses, there's plastic, yes. Yeah. And we're right across from Kmart Appliances near Sunny Isle with Kishana, who also has options for Valentine's Day for those people who are not sure what to get their loved one. Kishana, tell us what you have. Okay, well, we have baskets starting from $20. We have $35 baskets, $45 baskets. Um, they consist of bear, chocolate, some um, fragrance, yeah, soaps, and um, yeah, that's what we have here. So we also have male baskets coming also. So we have some for the men also. So for the women who are not sure what to get, they, she also has baskets for men. And what do the men's baskets have? Um, they have the same thing, fragrance and um, soaps, chocolate also. Mm. Yeah, you get a little champagne glass and apple cider. And I'm here across from Sunny Isle with Miss Mary Caesar, who also has gift ideas for Valentine's Day. Miss Caesar, tell us the items that you have. We have special on Mary Kay's and thinking of you, whether um, different kinds of Mary Kay's. And I'm here with Miss Linda again, right across from Kentucky Fried Chicken in Sunny Isle, and she has beautiful handmade baskets for Valentine's Day for both men and women. I'm holding one that has these stuffed animals and chocolates and bath and body stuff. What else do you have for us, Linda? Um, Victoria's Secret. I have a lot of Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret? Okay. And body. Mm -hmm. all right. Big teddy bears. Mm -hmm. So these are for all of us who still don't know what to get our honeys for Valentine's Day. Linda has something for everybody. Wes, that's what you want? Hey, man. This is classic. And what's your name, sweetheart? Linda, these are, you hand arrange these, don't you? And look how beautiful this is for the man. And a couple of our vendors were shy, but they have some really great gifts. And do what you can to help them out, especially on Valentine's Day. It's a day of love for all of us, businesses and your sweet honeys. Happy Valentine's Day from all of us at News Channel 8. And speaking of wearing red, the Red Cross needs your help. 
News Channel 8's Wes Small has that story. Thank you very much, Stacy. We are here at the American Red Cross St. Croix chapter, where we are on a volunteer drive. And Lord knows we need all the help we can get here um, with the lovely Miss Marla Matthew. I remember. And uh, she's here uh, to tell you how you can sign up and, and volunteer. I don't want the Red Cross to ever go anywhere. So how are we doing with our volunteer and our membership drive, and how are we doing financially? Wes, the economic situation in the Virgin Islands would undoubtedly affect the American Red Cross of the Virgin Islands. However, our role to prepare plan for disasters is one that cannot stop. Mm. We are encouraging our public to continue to give, no matter how little their donation is. It does make a difference. Our major trust is also to be ready for our home fires. And as you know that we've had several occurrences within the territory over the few months of homes being burnt. And American Red Cross, we are there on the scene to ensure that our victims are protected. We will um, find a place for them to stay mm. along with um, make provisions for food and clothing as well as help assisting them with emergency housing. And wow. so that, that is one of our missions. We never want to see that stop. Yes, and we are continuously now, as we brace for our hurricane season, to be in a state of readiness. Um, not only for hurricanes, but for all hazards. And so we are having a volunteer recruitment drive. We're asking all individuals in the community who have some time to give that they come in and register at the American Red Cross chapters at the Niski Center on St. Thomas and the Estate Castle Coakley on St. Croix. We will be having a series of training and, an, and a disaster institute to ensure that our Volunteers are trained in the operation to operation. The administration of the client assistance card, which is a credit card, a prepaid card, will be given to our clients yes. to go out and purchase services, as well as psychological first aid. Mm. And psychological first aid is open to everyone in our community because at this time, with the stresses, we want to ensure that individuals are comfortable and can deal with the changes in their lives. So that is a program that's open to anyone, whether you're a displaced worker or you've been laid off or you have individuals who are serving in the military as well you can bring your family in and register for that course let's put out a phone number please and a, and a website okay well, you can contact the American Red Cross at 778-5104 on St. Croix on St. Thomas is 774-0375 and you can email info at, um, at arc.usbi-redcross.org. Okay, thank you very much, Disaster Coordinator for our territory, Ms. Marla Matthew. I'm Wes Small, and again, do what you can for the Red Cross. I cannot imagine this entity not being here. In Sunny Isle with the lovely Miss Matthew, I am Wes Small for News Channel 8. And yes, please contact the Red Cross today if you're interested in volunteering your time or even becoming a board member, especially in preparation for March, which is Red Cross Month. But we'll have your Little League update when we come back. Stay with us. And over the weekend, it was opening day festivities for Elmo Plaskett's Little League. Hey! I'm here. I played softball 
volleyball and baseball, everything while we're going to school. I, I can show the pictures and bring to the, for you to see them. As long as they can play ball, I am for it. All the way. They know where I live, they know where they find me, morning, noon, and night. Don't forget, we're going to beat you. First of all, on behalf of the Department of Housing, Parks, and Recreation, I do want to welcome all of you here today. I must say that, you know, the Department of Housing, Parks, and Recreation is essential when we have these kind of activities because in order to have the baseball activities and so forth, we do have the Department of Housing, Parks, and Recreation and the staff doing a great job in maintaining these fields and getting everyone involved. So let's give the staff of the Department of Housing, Parks, and Recreation a big round of applause. What do you say? Thank you all guys very much. And I do want to commend Elmo Plaskett West for really the initiative that you have taken. I commend the new board that is in place. We could really see the enthusiasm and we continue to look forward to working with you. I trust in God. I love my country and will respect its laws. I will play fair and strive to win. But win or lose, I will always do my best. The Little League Parent and Volunteer Pledge. I will teach all my children to play fair and do their best. I will positively support all managers, coaches, and players. I will respect the decisions of the umpires. I will praise a good effort despite the outcomes of the games. Thank you. This is Miss Woodrop again, the president for the Elmo Plaskett West Little League. Come out and support. We have games from Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, evening time starting from 5.30. Come on out and support our youths. I'm going to let my public relations officer, Mr. Malik Brewster, you probably know him as Skabim G, talk a little bit. Definitely, man. The Friday night games, we're going to be at 6 o'clock. Saturday games, right now we got every band in the Virgin Islands scheduled to be on the ballpark. And Saturday is definitely about bringing baseball back and making it fun. You know, I'm bringing these kids to come out and have a great time in the good name of fellow sportsmanship. So I want to say thank you to News Channel 8, to Channel 6, everybody who's here helping us bring this coverage. You know, this is William Malik Brewster again. And like I said, Elmo Plaskett, West Little League Baseball is definitely here to stay.